Hi everyone, welcome to my Google Plus tutorial. Um, Google Plus is Google's social network and many teachers use its community forum to host private online discussions. So this tutorial is going to walk you through how to create your own Google Plus community. So to start, head on over to your Google Suite grid and select Google Plus. Once the platform has launched, on the left-hand side, select Communities. From there, you're going to locate your Communities section and um, more importantly, find where it allows you to create your own plus new community. Go ahead and select that. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to name your community. Um, I use the formula block letter, course name, and then school year. Next, um, and probably one of the most important things we're going to do right now is set your privacy restrictions. And so here I'm going to restrict my community to only Westwood members, so no personal Gmails are allowed. And then um, I'm going to lock it down even further and make my community private to members that I invite directly. So people can't just randomly take a look at what's happening or, um, you know, interact with my students in the class. So um, what I will do, however, is allow my community to be visible on search just in case someone's invitation gets lost on cyberspace. They can find the title and then ask to join and I can say yes or no. Um, this is also helpful when you get new students transfer into your class in a couple of weeks and you forget to invite them, they can ask themselves. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit done and this will create your community. And now you're, you're ready to start framing it out. So we're gonna navigate here to um, the three vertical dots in Google. Anytime you encounter that, and you encounter that in a lot of different places, always click it to see what options it's going to allow you to have. So in this case, um, your preferences, your edit, your community, manage your members once people start joining, um, et cetera. So, Edit community is where you'll go the most throughout the year because this is where you add your discussion threads. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. You might wanna make your cover page look pretty. So um, you can create your own photo, um, take a picture of your class and upload it, etc. Or you might have one in stock that is ready to go. From there, a tagline is asked for. So I've been you know, doing this a while now, so I've got language ready. I'm just going to move this over with you live um, so that you can see that it's um, not such a time commitment at this point for me. Um, again, you'll see here the privacy settings that are still available that you are able to change once you've created your community. So maybe you're just getting too many asks and you don't want to be visible anymore, so you can turn that off. Um, holding posts for review is super, super helpful when maybe you're asking um, a sensitive question and you're not quite sure the answers you're going to get back. So you want to get, you want to, you want to put eyes on your students content before their work goes live to the classroom. You can hold their posts for review. And then if you like what it says, you can push it forward. If you aren't comfortable with what it says, you can have that follow up conversation with the student. Um, and again, you can change this from assignment to assignment as needed. All right, description of your community. Um, again, I have language ready to go. Um, feel free to steal it and make it better. Um, I've been tweaking it over the past few years. Okay, categories. These are your discussion threads. Um, I will, my first assignment is an introductory assignment. Introduce yourself to your classmates. Start building that literal like classroom community feel. Um, it's not something I worry about in terms of sensitive information, so I won't hold it for review. I'll just let it, you know, populate live. Um, and then secondly, and annoyingly, you do need to put in a um, place marker for your second post in order for your first category to be visible. It's a glitch and I've learned this the hard way. Links you can use um, to add resources to your community, things that you think will help your students be successful in this space. And so um, I have four links that I use. Um, 
our responsible use guidelines, um, which uses the acronym CLEAR that I reference in um, my uh, community description. Um, I also link, um, you know, how to, you know, craft a great discussion post as well as a reply, how your work is going to get graded, and, um, you know, Google's own content in conduct policy. Once you've linked all of those things, um, I also want to show you that maybe things don't, um, you know, they don't look like they're in the order you want them to be in. So you can manipulate that order. Um, if you find it, you know, more helpful that, you know, the every time you add a discussion thread, it's always on top. You can always put that front and center um, and push September down, or you can keep it in descending order. It's up to you. And the same will be true for the, for the links. You can move those around accordingly. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit done. And then we can do a quick status check of our work. All right, so here's our picture. Um, here's the privacy settings, tag name, tagline, manage. Um, I can take a look at member requests, help for review. So if you do decide for an assignment, you want to put eyes on it before it become the content becomes live. This is where they will live. Under, again, I did that under manage. About community is a drop down. So there's our the description of the community, my expectations for them, and um, what's in the way. I think yeah is um, you'll see in a minute the links. The filter again a drop down is where your category um, threads will live. So if you want to go there to that one in particular, as, as opposed to all posts, which will just like any social media feed will post things in chronological order. All right, so now you, if things look good and you're ready to start engaging with your students, you want to invite them. The Easiest way to do that is head on over to that person icon and invite people with a link. You can email the link, which is that invitation link, or um, if you use uh, an LMS like Google Classroom or Canvas, you can email that out. Um, it's been pretty seamless, like I said. Um, once students receive that invitation, you can see who's accepting it under Manage Members. and. Um, the only time I really go here is, you know, the first few days to make sure everyone's in that should be in. And as schedule changes happen, um, I delete users that are, are no longer part of our community. Now, students are ready to start posting and you need to tell them what to do. So I'm gonna head on over to my American literature class. So here is the first assignment that I asked my students to complete. It's a low stakes assignment just to get them used to the platform and my expectations. So they are met with a, um, a post that will read task. It will tell them exactly what I want them to do. I disable the comments for my, for my task um, tile just so that no poor soul will answer the task in a comment field because it never works out in their favor to do that. Um, here, you'll see um, I've pinned the task to my community. This keeps it at the top of the feed and it doesn't get pushed down as people start posting. Um, I can delete it, I can edit, I can enable comments if I change my mind, um, or I can mute entirely the, the person, the student. Um, I have that option, that I, I have that ability because I'm the moderator. All right, and if I'm in really good standing, I will also try to um, complete the task myself so that they can set eyes visually on what I feel is a solid post. And again, um, with this assignment, I'm not holding posts for review, so because um, I'm not so wor so much worried about this content as I might be later in the year with something I ask them to think about. Now, once. Um, assignments start rolling in, you're going to get bombarded with notifications. Manage those here in your bell. 
and what you'll you'll this is what you'll see go ahead and hit settings here you can toggle them on or off when i know an assignment is coming in i turn my notifications off but then i turn them right back on so that i get notified for students that are late with um, the assignment so i'm not constantly going back to google plus looking for work um, when students are ready to um, you know create their own work again they can click in the what do you want to share field here they can um, add their content and most importantly add you know evidence um, a picture a an article a video and then they can go ahead and post it will prompt them to select what category should this post live in and that hopefully they pick the right one sometimes they don't and you have to search it out and move it over um, and then on their end they're always expected the next day to then go ahead and comment on one of their peers posts um, to you know continue the conversation um, when people start replying to posts, people can reply to um, the commenter directly. I can reply like this um, to, I know this is starting to get confusing, but um, I'm commenting directly to that comment. Or again, I can make my own comment. This green, um, Crayon um, also allows you to create a post. And um, it's also important that they're not creating their posts publicly, that they're, you know, start to learn to look for, um, you know, their, the community name here. All right, so if this ends up not going well for you, um, and it's just not what you thought it was going to be, it's not a commitment, you can delete it. It's again, it lives in your settings, and you can go ahead and delete the community. But fair warning, when you do that, there's no undo, there's, there's no archive or trash folder that you can pull it out of later. It's a commitment, so make sure that um, you're serious. I've, I don't think I've ever deleted a community. It, um, I just, for, my, for me, I haven't found it necessary. Um, I will lose the content in my community as students graduate. Um, that's one part that I have found um, a little bit sad, and I want to look back for examples. So I'm going to leave you with this image here from a uh, community from last year so you can see um, students themselves posting and um, attaching evidence. You know, here's an image, here's a video, and then students interacting with one another. Because that's really the whole purpose of this platform is that it's not just about students um, posting a discussion thread, but responding in and interacting with one another and sharing resources. So I hope you have found this helpful. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to um, seek me out. Thanks for watching.